This little graphic here shows the, the main components of a typical heat pump uh, type of system and in particular a ground source heat pump. So by clicking on the, the link here it will take us to an animation uh, at the energy saving trust of a ground source heat pump. So if you click on that in your PowerPoint presentation and view the, the animation, we'll talk through the, the main components of a, a ground source heat pump. The ground source heat pump in the little schematic here uh, illustrates your, your ground loop and then also illustrates the underfloor heating. So the technology can also be used with radiators. Uh, as I said, but generally the radiators need to be low temperature type radiators. The trenches in the garden are typically between one to two meter deep or if a borehole is used straight up and down will be between 15 and 100 meters depending on the energy needs of the property. And basically the longer the 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 coil in the garden or the deeper the, the heat uh, the, the borehole basically the more energy that the, that uh, ground loop will produce or potentially can produce. So what we want to have a look at is the main components now in the, the heat pump technology. So all heat pumps are made up of the following sort of uh, components. First you have uh, your evaporator, you have a condenser, an expansion valve a comp and a compressor and that's basically your, your heat pump. The ground loop absorbs the heat from the ground and the heat is transferred into the, the water glycol mix that's in the pipework and this is then transferred to a refrigerant by the evaporator changing it from a liquid to a gas. So the evaporator is basically a heat exchanger at this point. What the compressor does then is that gas that it has transferred its, its low grade heat to, that gas is then compressed and the compressor compresses the gas which causes the temperature to rise. So the compressed gas then moves around to the condenser side and as the temperature has risen the condenser then transfers the, the hotter gas, the heat from the hotter gas into the central heating system. So that will either be into a storage, hot water storage cylinder or to an underfloor loop. And then the hot gas is now cooled and returns back into the evaporator via the expansion valve. So click on the little animation up here and you can see the animation in full at the Energy Saving Trust. So the thing to remember from this slide is the main components of a, of a heat pump being the condenser, evaporator, expansion valve and the compressor and the, the heat pump, the circulating pump. To conclude this section on ground source heat pumps uh, just a little recap of what we've learned. Uh, ground source heat pumps can use both horizontal and vertical ground source heat pump uh, systems. The ground loop or the network of pipes pumping the water underground can be fitted horizontally or vertically. Horizontal systems are laid in shallow trenches over a wide surface area um, whereas vertical systems use boreholes uh, depending on the size of the system can be anywhere between 15 to 100 meters deep. Size of the system really depends on the available space that you have around your property. And regardless of what type of heat pump that is installed, it is vitally important that the heat pump system is correctly sized for your heating needs. So that is both the, the ground loop needs to be properly sized and the rating of the heat pump device itself needs to be correctly sized for the application. Water and antifreeze is pumped around the ground loop and absorbs the naturally occurring heat from the ground. And basically the whole process is similar to that that's used to, to cool the fridge in a typical domestic setting. But it works in reverse in that it takes the cold from the outside and brings it into the, amplifies the heat that is in it into the inside domestic hot water and space heating. Heat pump itself uh, consists of an evaporator, a compressor and a condenser to take the heat uh, from the water mixture and transfers it to your domestic heating system. And a ground source heat pump typically increases the temperature from the ground uh, by about 1.5 and 4 times. So if the ground temperature is 12 degrees C, the output would be between 18 and 48 degrees C. 
So once you get up above 40 degrees C, it starts to become a temperature that's useful for washing and bathing. So that heat can then be used in a radiator, hot water, or in an underfloor heating system. So you may also need a, an additional backup heating system, but that'll depend on each individual home. So 48 degrees C is particularly okay for underfloor heating systems, which can run at a temperature of about 45 degrees centigrade.